Hi, I'm Andrew Seabrook from New Zealand Bloodstock and I'd like to welcome you to the new Double Tree by Hilton Karaka Hotel. Based here at Karaka, it's been the dream of the Vela family to have a hotel here on the complex at Karaka for 20 years. We can't wait to see everyone, locals and international buyers here at our sales later in the month. It's a magnificent hotel and I'm sure you'll enjoy every aspect of it. I'm Caroline Searcy, welcome to the 2023 NZB Karaka Yearling Sale Preview and as Andrew Seabrook says, anticipation has been building towards this sale for several years with New Zealand, Australian and other international buyers set to congregate in search of racing's next champions. New Zealand horses have had an absolutely magnificent 12 months around the world particularly in Australia. Last season, 7% of the horses in Australia are made up of New Zealand thoroughbreds, yet they won 22% of the Group 1 races. So fantastic results achieved. And I honestly think the stallion strength in New Zealand at the moment is the best we have seen for at least 10 years. So really excited about the sales coming up in January. Something there for everyone. Let's bring it on. I hope you enjoy the opportunity in the next hour to savour the mouth-watering offering on sale here at Caraca from Sunday, January 29, featuring the best of Australasian bloodlines who will be winning the world's major races for many years to come. Brendan and Joe Lindsay have already gone a long way towards continuing the great history of Cambridge Stud and things are only going to get a whole lot better, as well as a slew of racehorses carrying their colours to success on Australian racetracks, their young sire Al Manzor had a start to his career you could only dream about. There are 56 yearlings by Al Manzor catalogued for Caraca Book One, some of them we're about to show you here from the Cambridge Draft. Mark, it's an exciting time, Caraca 2023, welcoming back people from around the world that haven't been to the NZB sale for a couple of years now. And the Cambridge draft is looking fantastic. And again, your stallions are performing. Al Manzor, what a year he's had. Dynastic winning the Caraca Million. And of course, Manzor is winning the Victoria Derby at three from the first crop. Oh, certainly, Caroline. It's been an exciting year having Al Manzor. Um, have a couple of good horses in the, in the spring, obviously with Manzois. It cemented him as a, as a stall commercial stallion. Um, I think the expectations were there um, from the first time he hit the sale ring. So it's backed up now with Manzois winning a Victoria Derby. Another good horse of um, Liam Howley's called uh, Virtuous Circle. He looked very promising in the spring and um, he's put him aside and he's going to tackle the um, autumn racing in, in Sydney. So well, things all go well for our Manzor, and uh, which is great heading into a sale. And the racehorses, not only horses that Brendan and Joe Lindsay and the team have bred here at Cambridge Stud, but also racing in their colours as well. The gold and black checks, Exolita winning the Rose of Kingston, Polygon, a really promising horse as well, and Pinarello doing the job as well. So it's so exciting to see you know, what you're doing here on the farm translating to racetrack success. Oh, it's great for Cambridge Stud and obviously for uh, Brendan and Joe and the, and the whole team team you know they put a lot of work into it and um, and to get the results like that it's sort of it's very satisfying and obviously we race a lot of horses so to get those sort of outcomes it sort of it sort of makes the whole the whole season a lot more pleasant well looking at the draft for 2023 we start with lot 40 by Dundeal from Ardesh this filly is a three-quarter sister to a group winner Mongolian Marshall from the the great uh, Trista Love 8 Carrot family. Ardesh is a half sister to Forever Loved and Zephyron. So lots of recent winners in the family as well. She's a quality filly. Um, really like this filly. She's got sort of depth to her girth and a lot of presence about her. Moves well. Attractive filly. She hails from a great um, Cambridge stud family, which is obviously prolific with stakes winners. And now we're really excited about her going heading to those sales. When you look at her, she's got that sort of bit of that high chaparral athleticism but she's got a lot of de hair quality, you know, just that um, the constitution and, and, yeah, and presence about her. Next is lot 126 by Al Manzor from Dana here, another filly here. The Dan won five times and is a half-sister to the matriarch winner, Ocean X. Yeah, she's another quality filly. Uh, she's, she's very neat filly, attractive, sensible, 
moves well, and obviously she's out of her. Tahir Mir, Tahir Mir's leave a lot of quality, and she won five, as you said, and yeah, she's produced, already produced a stakes winner, and left a recent winner too. Lot 48A, she's another filly. This one's by Written Tycoon from Save the Date. Of course, from when Written Tycoon stood at Arrowfield Stud in the Hunter Valley before going to Yulong Farm. The dam's a four-time uh, winner, group placed, and by Savabeel from the family of the great Starcraft. And again, more updates on the page here too. Yeah, another another lovely filly. She's obviously by Champion Sire, written tycoon, as we're all all aware of, and out of a young Savabeel mare who's obviously been a, um, a stakes performer from that good family of Waikato studs that hails back to uh, Starcraft. I think she'll be well received. She's she's got she's a lovely filly, good temperament, mature filly with a great hindquarter on her. And then lot four nine three by another Australian sire, Lonro from Sawakina, and the dams by See the Stars from a Group One winner in France and the, the family of the Arc winner. Sagamix. Yeah, he's a quality colt. Got a lot of time for him. Attractive colt. Uh, I think he'll command a lot of attention at the sales. Uh, obviously, he's by Lon Rowe, who's a champion stallion, and it hails back to one of those um, great European families, which has been prolific, uh, full of prolific Group One winners. Obviously, with Sagamix winning the Pretty Arc, and then obviously you have um, Japan, and um, recently a horse called Perfect Power, who was a um, two-year-old winner in, in Europe. Yeah, you know, I think he will command a lot of attention uh, amongst the buyers. Lot 180 is a colt by Almanzor again. This one's from Fearless Choice, from the family of Shout Not and Amelia's Dream. So a bit of speed in there. He's a half to a two-year-old winner, Artie Beats him too. He's a handsome fellow, this one. Yeah, I actually really like this colt a lot. He's a neat colt and he just keeps progressing and he's got a great outlook. He's out of an, obviously a Lon Roe mare. Um, out of a Redoute's mare, so that he's got a, a very good genetic structure, and then it's underpinned in the third dam by a very fast family, obviously, with Shelt Not. So by the time we get to the sales, he's just going to be a very, very appealing sort of horse. He moves well, great temperament, uh, well balanced colt, and he's a typical of the Almanzors. They just get better and better as they go on. And finally, lot 100, Almanzor from Choc Toc. This colt's dam is by Sham Express from the family of Artistry, Cronus, Pravda, Samantha Mess. And he's a big fellow, isn't he, with a really good stride. Oh, he certainly is, Caroline. He's a Ford Colt, very mature, heading towards the sales. He's going to be well furnished. He looks like a crack in millions type. Um, it wouldn't surprise him if he gets there. He's probably the, the most Ford Colt we have in our barn. Uh, very happy with him, and I think he'll be well received when um, when we get up to Cracker. Great to get everyone back here, and especially it's the Australians. You know, they've been. I think they've had itchy feet for a while, and uh, there's been good word around the, the yelling drafts around the place, and. Uh, I think we're all excited about getting up there. For us, you know, we've got a good, I think we've got a solid draft. Uh, we've got a lot of depth of um, proven stallions uh, and a good cross section of horses. So, and they're matched by some good physicals. So, I think we're, yeah, we're really excited about getting up there and, and actually parading these horses in front of the buyers. Even our local guys, you know, they, I think they're pretty keen to get up there and, and, and look at the yearlings. And so, I think overall, I think we're going to have a, the sale's going to be. I think reasonably um, strong. Coming off the Gold Coast, it tends to be, it follows suit. So I think everyone's got, got the right positive sort of attitude and heading towards Cracker. And yeah, as I said, pretty excited about getting there, I think. Without doubt, there'll be more Australian stakes winners in the Cambridge Stud Draft this year and loads of opportunities for New Zealand and other international buyers here at Caraca. So good luck to everyone who supports the Cambridge team in 2023. Mark Chitty's Haunui Farm has a great record for producing Group 1 winners, the most recent champion being 14-time Group 1 victor Melody Bell. And this year's draft is no different to previous ones, again with plenty of opportunities to buy future racetrack champions. <laughs> Nui Farm, just a, a wonderful family operation and obviously so many generations of broodmares providing Group 1 winners right around Australasia and around the world as well. Just in the last 12 months, your graduates have been sensational too. Verona, a Frank Packer Plate winner, Money Catcher in Hong Kong, Showmanship, won the Show County, Field of Gold, the Waikato Guineas and Crosshaven in the Kevin Heffernan. So you really are getting these group winners coming through year in, year out, right throughout New Zealand and importantly Australia. Yeah, absolutely, Caroline. Like, it's nice to have you here and uh, back on New Zealand shores after a good period of time. Look, we've had a nice, we've had a nice 12 months. 
um, horses have been running and that's that's the most important part in all our important jurisdictions. Well a bit of a rainy day here today but that's what makes New Zealand so beautiful and green but it's a lovely draft again and you, you're reaching right back into the, the depths of those those wonderful female families for some of the 2023 yearlings. Yeah absolutely I mean um, you know we've had Mrs Lester be a long time client and we're offering um, a couple of special fillies um, from her families um, and a couple of fillies from our foundation family, from the Fox owner family, eighth generation. Uh, you know, it's pretty special. I think, um, you know, our filly draft is, is a little bit special this year because it's closely related to some very nice families and racehorses. Well, we start with lot 207 by Super Seth from Garden of Swans. The dam's a half-sister to a European star Group 1 winner in Mukadram. Beautiful colt to start things off. Lovely, strong individual, isn't he? Yeah, he is. He's, a, he's been a really nice horse right from him being born. We've been lucky enough to uh, house uh, Jonathan Munn's GSA Bloodstock's mares that went to Super Seth. Obviously, Jonathan raced Super Seth, uh, so he's a big supporter in his first year. And we've got five or six yearlings by Super Seth uh, in the draft. He's a standout colt out of a young Oasis Dream mare. She had a couple of Savabelle fillies to start with. Great moving horse. We found the Super Cess to be really good movers and handled the prep really well. Lot 38 by Savabelle from Arabian Night. And the dam's from a strong stakes winning US family. He's a bit of a character, isn't he? But again, you can sort of see that Zabil coming through too. Yeah, absolutely. I think when he stood up there for the last time, you really stood back and said he, he's a lot of... Savabils and Zabil, young Oasis Dream mare um, from a really nice uh, European family. Oh, I think he's going to be a more precocious style of Savabil. Easy horse to prep. What more do we need to say about Savabil? He's been a great stallion of colts and, and fillies, doing the job here and in Australia year in, year out. Lot 616 is by Super Seth from Valpolicella. Now, this filly, you know, you talk about absolute diamonds of, of yearlings that you're taking to sale. I absolutely love her for a start. I think everybody will. Of course, one of Hanui's foundation families going back, as you say, the eight generations. And Val Policella has already produced Vavasaur, Villanova, Celebrity Dream, and a Sydney Cup and Tancred runner-up in Rondonella. I mean, what a page and what an individual. Yeah, I think individual um, matches pedigree. You know, I think she's a mix between... Vavasur and Celebrity Dream Rondonella. We haven't offered a filly like this for a little period of time, I don't think. Vala Policello was a very good mare herself um, on the racetrack and been a wonderful producer. Filly's just handled prep, you can see her temperament, nothing phases her. Um, and I'm, I'm sure she'll be well sought after. And another one I think there'll be plenty of people waiting for is Lot 344 by Piero. Of course, this is the half-sister to the wonderful 14-time Group 1 winner in Melody Bell and also to the Geelong Classic winner, Tutu Kaka. I'm really interested in this cross with Piero and a lovely filly, isn't she? She's, she's quite a forward sort of filly. Yeah, I think we're very lucky to be offering this filly. Um, Mrs Lester, a long-time client, uh, she's kept three fillies out of the mare, so this was the time to probably take another filly to the market uh, and let the market decide. Mid-October, born foal, has gone forward really nicely. Tutakaka looks like he's back to really good form. He won the Taupo Cup, which is great. And, and Malika Bell herself had a lot of ability. She was the same year as Fix, who was a filly of the year. Lovely filly, great to do anything with, just gets on, does her job. Which will stand her in great stead as a race filly. Lot 74, this is when the rain was really starting to, just to come in, the Almanzor Bondi Walk filly. And we know Almanzor cementing himself as one of New Zealand's most exciting young sires. First foal of a showcasing mare who's a half-sister to Activation. So Coogee Walk, the second dam, Boardwalk Angel, the third. So a family that's so well known in Australia and New Zealand. Yeah, absolutely. It's a very physical filly. Probably see a great mix of um, showcasing in with Al Mansour. First foal of a, of a young mare that showed good ability and unfortunately went and missed at her very first start. Coogee Walk was a railway winner and obviously Boardwalk Angel, who we were lucky enough, uh, she was brought out of the Trelawney dispersal many moons ago by, by Mrs Lester. And again, lucky enough to be taking a filly of this quality uh, to the market. And then finally, lot 558, another by Al Manzor from Stryker. The dam's a stakes winner, second in a group one Thorndon Mile, and a half-sister to Calvine and Cozzy Bay. You know, a great cross for Al Manzor. Oh, absolutely. This is a family developed by the late Don McLaren, a great client of the farms. And, uh, you know, he bought Calvinia all those years ago with Paul Moroni at Sydney Easter, and it's developed into one of the most sought-after families in Australasia. A striker's done a really nice job. She was a really good mare, um, was an emerging mare when she ran second to Sir Slick, you know, great warrior racehorse here in New Zealand in the Thorndon Mile. She's already produced first impressions. This filly's probably going to take a little bit more time. She's more of a, a staying style of filly. 
but a lovely, correct filly just thrived in the preparation. So delighted to be taking her to the market uh, in late January. Oh, I think like any sale, the good horses will find their level very easily. The, the, the strength of the sale will always be in the middle, I think. And you know, by having people back on the sale ground, you know, you, you bring people that are that are invested in the game on to a sale ground. They can't help but participate in the sale. And we've had some sires emerge in the last 12 to 18 months through a number of the different studs in New Zealand. Looking forward to it, uh, keep feet on the ground and um, you know, welcome everyone uh, late January. Our Nui Farm, one of New Zealand's great showpiece operations and always popular with thoroughbred buyers year in and year out. Time for a break on our 2023 NZB Karaka Yearling Sale Preview. Coming up, we'll feature yearlings from Caramore, Pencaro and Hallmark Stud. Welcome back to our 2023 NZB Yearling Sale Preview, coming to you from the Double Tree Hilton here at the Caracas Sales Complex. Gordon Cunningham is revered as one of the finest horsemen in the world, and the proof is in the pudding as the Caramore Drafts, year in, year out, provide superior race horses. The last 12 months have been sensational, and there's no doubt the crop of 2023 will follow in their footsteps. see so much of the, the great record of New Zealand bred horses right around the world but in particular in Australia and New Zealand and Caramore is probably one of the best examples of that. Your record just in recent times of graduates from the farm here, no compromise in the Metropolitan, Kovalika a real up and comer winning the Grand Prix Stakes, an Australian filly of the year Gypsy Goddess, Asterisk won the, the New Zealand Derby, Tafane, Ruthless Dame, Nerve Not Verve, Anavisto, and the exciting Financier. I mean, it really is a record you should be proud of. Absolutely, Caroline. We certainly take a great deal of fulfilment from um, watching our horses perform um, once they leave our farm. And But I do just know that how fortunate we are that um, all of these horses have been trained to their potential, which is, is not a given, and we're just fortunate that they managed to get on the winner's board in the big races. Well, we start with Lot 544, a colt by the, the real sire on the rise, Al Manzor from Spirit of Galway. This page for this colt is just full of stakes winners, such as the Cantala stakes winner, Shillelagh, Kerwin's Lane, Johnny Johnny, Tullamore. He's a gorgeous colt, isn't he? He's just all business. Regardless of the way he's bred, he's a very, very good colt. He'll always take your eye. You know, he, he is his damn line in his physique, but equally he's got the movement of what you see in the Almanzors. And I think he's a very big prospect for us. He's got beautiful blood with being out of a mare by Rip Van Winkle, who's doing a good job as a broodmare sire, but also out of a full sister to Shillelagh. It's, it's a good family, and I think he's got the potential to put himself on, on the winner's board in years to come. Lot 405 by Pozier out of Pacific Colt. Well, Pozier's well and truly proven now, isn't he? And this particular Colt from Pacific has a lot of encosta de Largo there as well through Pozier. Very athletic. I think he's an outstanding Colt. I really do. What I really like mostly about him is, is that he actually fits his page. We can't say enough about Pozier. They're very progressive horses from three onwards, particularly this Colt. He's got the physique of a horse that could well get up at the back end of, it, of his two-year-old year, but you could equally see him being an absolute weight for age come three and four. He's, he's a big, big chance, I believe. Lot 50 by Ocean Park out of Avisto. This Colt's a half-brother to Francis Tresaday winner, Anna Visto, who was also second in the Queen of the Turf Stakes in Sydney. He's, he's actually quite a non-assuming Colt. I just got a real kick out of watching him up on the lawn this morning. In my eyes, he's his mother's son. She's by Tavistock, but she was actually Tavistock's first winner. She was his first stakes winner. And Anna Visto became Tavistock's first stakes producer. He's not the biggest in the world, but he's got a, a lovely, easy action. It's quiet in himself, but he has got a bit of fizz. And it's just telling me that he's maturing nicely in his mind. I just think he's a little racehorse. Lot 603 by Savabill from Toffee Nose. The dam's a group play skater in Melbourne, a November fall, but again, a great action on this fellow. 
Yep, well, again, I got a good thrill this morning just watching him up on our lawn there, which is the acid test for me, really. And one of our last foals born uh, of his crop, he's just finally coming to it now. He's quite unfurnished, and people will see that when they come to the sales, but he's just a lovely athletic horse, and we're seeing it more now that he's he's getting there in his strength. This lad's damn line, going back to Denise's Joy and the John Singleton family, and you put in Galileo, he has unreal potential, I really feel. Despite his date of birth, it would not surprise me to see him up certainly in the spring or autumn as a three-year-old at the very latest, he's a big, big chance. Lot 521 by Dundee from Silver Tiara. This filly is a three-quarter sister to the Huddy's Tough Silvera and a close relation to Shootout and bred, as you can see by the brand, by Linda and Graham Huddy. Absolutely. You know, when I saw this filly as a weanling, I just thought, I'm going to have you in my draft. She gives me a thrill every day, to be honest, just to see her development. She's come out on the lawn there this morning just like the very best of our horses do. She's beautiful quality, but she's got beautiful movement. And most of all, her mind is just, she's very, very special. I can just see 1,000 guineas and oaks stamped all over her. Let's hope she can get on her honours board one day. And lot 608 by Justify from Tulip. Of course, Justify, the, the American Triple Crown winner. And the dam was placed in a, a golden slipper, fourth in a blue diamond, and won the Magic Knight as well. I mean, she was a superior filly herself. Absolutely, I feel very privileged to be offering this filly won by justify who's made a an exceptional start in the northern hemisphere perhaps when least expected um in that he started 29 individual winners up there six or seven stakes winners and you really would have expected them to be more three-year-old types so we know they've got the engines so we actually offered tulip herself as a yearling and she put piero on the map but she was a real high class filly this filly has just got the most beautiful head she's got a real filly's head lovely shoulder on her she is big like her breed, like you expect from the Justifies, but equally she's very balanced with it. I said to Tom Magner when he asked me if I'd like to sell her was, she can lead her draft out and she's certainly fitting the bill. I think it's all culminating in what's going to be a very exciting Caraca for us. I really feel we're on target, not just the way they present, but I really feel we're on target to take a draft of high class prospects up there to the sales. And good luck to the Curramore team in 2023. It's always fun picking the stakes winners from that draft. Sir so Peter Vella's Pencaro Stud is one of the world's great broodmare operations, developing champion racehorse pedigrees over generations, including the great ethereal family of Darcy, Brahma, Burgundy and so many more. We caught up with the great mare Ethereal herself, the Caulfield and Melbourne Cup winner, now aged 25, as a number of her close relations are set to go through the sales ring at Caraca 23. <music> Great year for the, the Vellas, yourself and uh, and all the team here at Pencaro. Darcy Brahma and Burgundy, of course, stallions you bred, they're now so commercial. Hazelark, Dunkel, lots of promising horses racing in Australia. And, and these yearlings are all from stakes winning mares you've bred and raised. Yes, well that's our modus operandi. We obviously sell at the sales every year, but we try to breed and race our own replacements. So yeah, it's a great uh, privilege to be able to offer yearlings out of those mares who have uh, succeeded on the track in the past in our colours. We try to get a balance between uh, the proven horses, uh, kicking stallions off, and, and then of course you need those proven mid-range horses as well to keep the families rolling over. So we've got a really good range here and I think there's something for everyone. Well, we start for 2023 with Lot 58, Exceed and Excel, Barberdine Colt. And the dam is by Shamadal Sire Giants Causeway. And this Colt's a half-brother to the Eulogy Stakes winner in Lilikoy. Exactly. And Lilikoy, another filly that we raced. She was a lovely type of uh, mare. The family actually has a lot of two-year-old speed in it. So the grand dam is Damson, champion uh, two-year-old filly in Ireland. And we just thought that this cross would be a, a, a great way to pick up the Exceed and Excel speed and put some of the Giants Causeway toughness in there as well. He's just thriving on the, the routine of the yearling preparation. He's grown and matured and he's pretty well ready to go to that sale. 
Lot 145 is by Written Tycoon, of course, a former champion Australian sire. And of course, these are the, the yearlings from his time at Arrowfield Stud in the Hunter Valley. This is from Dolma Bache. She's by Redoute's Choice. She was a Group 2 winner, Group 1 place. And again, it is the great ethereal Burgundy Darcy Brahma family. A lovely action on this colt. Yes, he, he, he's a really nice colt. We think he could be uh, a horse that will get a mile. Uh, which Written Tycoon has succeeded in before with the likes of Ole Kerr. Uh, and of course he's got stallion potential down the line with proven stallions in the pedigree and dam size of the quality of Reduce, Choice, Zabiel and Vice Regal in the mix. Lot 520 is next by the first season sire Super Seth of course from Waikato Stud from Silver Eclipse and the dam was a stakes winner and multiple stakes plays from the great Bell family from New Zealand. Th that's exactly right. So we've got a lot of faith in Super Seth. We're shareholders in him. We've supported him with some good mares and we've got some lovely stock to offer by him this year. Uh, that is a family that we've had for a long time and you'll notice on the page here there's four consecutive stakes winners in a row. So that's, that's very unique to see four dams that are stakes winners uh, in succession. Next is a filly, lot 567, by US Navy flag from a wonderful race filly, Sapira. Um, she was a, a three-time group winner, four-time group one placed by Sababiel, a granddaughter of your wonderful ethereal, and US Navy flag himself was a July Cup winner by Warfront. Uh, Eleonora, of course, a close relation with ethereal star now. And this is a really sensible professional filly, isn't she? She's a lovely filly, yes. She's got a really classic walk and classic sense about her. Uh, this particular branch of the family is the most active at the moment. You mentioned ethereal star. She's a two-year-old stakes winner just six weeks ago, and she's heading to the Caraca Millions. It's just a branch of the family that's very active and very versatile, and we're, we're thrilled with the quality of filly that Supera has been able to throw at a first effort. And finally, Lot 526 by Super Seth again from Sleeping Beauty. This filly is from a dam by Rip Van Winkle, who was a group and listed winner. So again, a high-class race mare. Yes, yeah, she's a really tough mare. She won 10 races. Uh, she didn't have a big number of starts. She was very, very competitive. It's a really good family, uh, Racing to Wins family, Dane Hill and Costa de Lago in the mix there. So really happy with this filly, think that she's going to meet with a lot of favour at the sale. Of course now back to January for Caraca 23, how do you see that? Yeah I'm happy with January, it's, it's uh, tried and true, I think it gives us a slot in the calendar that works, I think it fits for our buyers and really it wasn't much of an adjustment to get back to being in that uh, in that pattern. And it's been such a huge investment, hasn't it, for so many years with Sir Peter Vela and, and the whole family, you know, not only here but with NZB as well. And I guess there's, you know, renewed excitement for so many people to get back to Caraca. Absolutely, it's great to have visitors again. Uh, nobody likes being segregated and cut off from your, your clients. So uh, getting people back onto the farms, being able to show them your stock and your property, it's a great pleasure as well as uh, being a great opportunity to socialise and pick up on old friendships. And thanks to Leon and the Pencaro team for showing off their fabulous yearlings bound for Caraca. Mark and Danny Baker's Hallmark Start is another wonderful family owned thoroughbred operation consistently producing group winners in Australasia and beyond. They access the best New Zealand and Australian bloodlines and the crop of 2023 is again sure to attract the best judges. Mark, we've been battling the weather all week around New Zealand, but it's wonderful to see your yearlings here at Hallmark start. You're coming off a fantastic year where you've seen horses such as Impenda Bell, who we featured in our preview last year, winning the Group 2 Wakefield Stakes. She's one of the leading contenders for the Caraca Million. Self-Obsession, uh, Joint Filly of the Year, Bonnie Lass, Lord Cosmos, the stakes winners. And something we were really thrilled to see just before filming this preview was Prowess winning the Auckland Guineas. What a year. Yeah, we've had a wonderful year, uh, Carolyn, and it doesn't always happen like that, so enjoy the ride. You know, when clients and agents and trainers pay a bit of money for horses because she made 2.30, or it doesn't matter what they pay, you just want them to go on for them, that's all you want. So it was a great result, delighted for Roger and Robert, the skippers, and terrific to see because we own the mother and they've got a beautiful filly at foot and back and fold the pass here again, so it's all results driven, so it was a 
terrific result and hopefully she can go on from here and win more for them. We start with lot 107 by Savabil from Cool and Sassy. This is the full brother to the Group 1 winning two-year-old in Caracas, million winner Cool as a Beal, who's now at start at New Haven Park in New South Wales. Great temperament in the drizzle we've had all week and so well related. We didn't sell uh, his brother Cool as a Beal, but I saw him as a yearling. I think this guy's got a little bit more scope and stretch. Cool as a Beal was an absolute ready-made two-year-old. Very coupled up. Tiaka were here last week, David else commented on that. This guy might have a little bit more stretch, a little bit more scope, but as you saw, he's a cracking individual, great hip, great girth, terrific mover, really good brain, and of course bred by the Duncan Fell Fairdale. He's been such prolific breeders for a long time, so looking forward to presenting him. Next is 379 by Al Manzor from Notice Received. This is a half-brother to Subpoenaed who won the Golden Pendant and the Millie Fox and was runner-up in the Group 1 Sankster Stakes and, of course, summons another half-relations with Chris Waller now. He really is a great-looking horse and presenting him for the Pikes, Tony's parents, Wayne and Vicky and that team. Great brain, great mover and a horse, you can see at three, will just be a lovely individual. I think what um, strikes us really with him is he's just an absolute teddy bear. He just lives to eat, lives to sleep and lives to please. He's unflappable. Typically the old man Zors and we've worked with a lot of them now, great brains. This guy is a real racehorse. He won't be surprised if he's out early, never say never. The whole action and he's got the frame there to grow into himself and he'll be some three-year-old and uh, into those classic and middle distance. Then we have lot 386 by Tarzino from Akura Rose. This is from the family of Lateria, this cold. He's a lovely, quiet fellow, isn't he? He's just a, a real workman. He is. And another one, we've got, I don't want to be repeating myself, but he's got a great mind too and has been since birth by a really exciting young stallion in Tarzino. And to get two group one winners in your first crop in Australia, it's very hard to achieve. So there's no doubt the stallion's the real deal. Correct, great bone. Like he'll make a lovely classic horse too. Can't wait to get him up there. And he's, he's, he's just copped the prep so well, he just wants to please. Our first filly is lot 482 by Poisier from Sarasun. The dam of this filly is a stakes winner and a full brother, Nikal Spur, is a four-time winner. See a filly that's done really well, because uh, you've got to remember she's a November foal, but you wouldn't know it. So she might be out earlier than you think. Everyone forgets proper bills and in the November foal. Uh, she's all quality, great rain, great girth. Her brother's a city winner in Australia. And this filly's one of only two by Prasir that's out of a stakes winner in the whole sale. So she'll be sought after. But she's correct. There's nothing left to say about Prasir. He's just um, off a 7,000 service fee from, with all due respect, middle of the road mares, he's done an incredible job and he's only going to go on from here. Mm, New Zealand's I'm Invincible. <laughs> yes he will be, John Thompson will love to hear that. Next is a filly, lot 14 by Tavachi from Adriatico. Tavachi of course having the flight stakes winner, never been kissed and this is a half sister to Robusto and Bobby D. Yes yeah, she's all quality, great action filly, once again great mind, uses herself so well and the mare's done the job, two stakes horse, half to two stakes horses and Tabachi needs no introduction. He's done a great job, especially with his fillies. And I'm really proud to present her for the Jamara team. And finally, lot 142 by Dundeal from Diminish. You've always been a big fan of Dundeal. And the dams by Fastnet Rocks, a half-sister to Rob Heathcote's great sprinter buffering. Really interesting cross with the high chaparral and the sprinting family. It is lovely cross. She's got size and scope. I think it was a terrific mating. She's got more size and scope than most of the Dundeals. She's got a lovely frame to grow into. Great action filly, uses herself beautifully, gets down and gets along great. Great brain. She's just a ready-made racehorse ready to go. But you never count your chickens, Sean. Carolyn, look, given the season that the Kiwi breeds have had, the stronger the Gold Coast is, the better for us because we have the best value for money horses in the world. Can't wait to get everyone back here, albeit it's great with the photos and the videos over the year and all online, but there's nothing like seeing horses in the flesh. I think if you've got the article, well-conformed horse, and you need luck with scope and x-ray, with a bit of page, there'll be plenty of money there. If you've got the article, you'll have a very good sale. Can't wait to see some of those hallmark yearlings hitting the racetracks. Coming up after the break on our 2023 NZB Karaka Yearling Sale Preview, we look at some of the yearlings on offer from Windsor Park Stud and the Oaks.
Welcome back to the 2023 NZB Yelling Sale Preview coming to you from the new Karaka Doubletree Hilton. Windsor Park Start has a long and successful history in the thoroughbred industry through Nelson Schick and now his son Roddy, standing champion stallions and breeding from champion broodmares for generations. The 2023 crop is following on from some absolute superstars, including Might and Power and current leading stallion in Australia, So You Think. Roddy, Windsor Park's always had a, a wonderful record at the NZB Yearling Sale and, and just your graduates of the past 12 months are quite incredible. Mustang Valley winning the Livermore Classic, the Group 1, call sign Mav, a Rupert Clark Stakes and he's now a four-time Group 1 winner. Wild Night by your own Vanbra winning a Group 2, five in a row. Dynastic, the Caraca Million. Troy Briand, he's the great hope of the side at the moment, isn't he, with the Caraca Million coming up. An unbeaten Group winner of the Eclipse Stakes and Mr Maestro winning the Norman Robinson. So, they're winning in Australia and New Zealand just so consistently. Yeah, it's been a fantastic season, you know, to have the, all those horses, plus um, she's dominance and other stakes from November. So he's had his three stakes horses this season, and Termi Loose doing well. You know, having Lickety split in Australia this year, win the first group bump for Termi Loose, it's been a really uh, exciting season. Well, looking at Caracca 2023, the first lot we'll look at here is lot 39 by Russian Revolution. This colt's the half-brother to the Eclipse winner, as I mentioned, Tro Briand, and you sold him last year to David Ellis for 260000 Well, look, they're really similar. You know, we never thought we'd get a, a son of Kermedic to win a group uh, two two-year-old race. Um, so I'm really surprised at what he's done and, and pretty excited for him. And DC is such a great supporter, so no, really good. But this fella is in very much the same mould, but probably with a, with a speedier um, sideline. The next slot here at Windsor Park is lot 59 by Sava Beal, of course, the, the consistent champion New Zealand sire from Bayrock. So this is the family of the now Group 1 winner, Pulele. Bayrock, this is just a wonderful page. This is the full sister to Merchant Navy, and this colt's the full brother to Hinda. Yeah, this colt just oozes class. You know, it's a beautiful family. Legally Bay, I mean, what can you say? She's, you know, great, great, great family. And Sava Beal, you know, he's been the most consistent sire in New Zealand, and we've just had so much luck with him as a, as a stallion. So... This colt's going to be certainly uh, well sought after at Caracas. Lot 83 is a filly by Lonro from Capucine. The dam was a, a three-time winner, a three-quarter sister to the mighty So You Think from his half-sister, La Souvenir. Yeah, well, Lonro, what can you say? You know, he's such a, a, a such a good sire. And it's a family that we've had a lot to do with. So You Think being um, born and raised here, we're really excited to take a filly of that quality to the sales. Lot 85 is by your own Turn Me Loose, the son of Ifraj, out of Cash in Transit. Dan is by Snitzel, a four-time champion Australian sire and a half-sister to Upstage and El Pohi. So a lot of group success right through the pedigree as well. Yeah, he's a real mixture of uh, Turn Me Loose, but out of a Snitzel mare, he's got that, a lot of strength and quality, but that body that he's got on is thrown a little bit to the dam size. He'll, he'll be a colt that could make a back-end two-year-old and, and three-year-old. Lot 374, this is a filly by Vanbra uh, out of Night of Passion. And this filly's from a half-sister to Dance, Dance, Dance and Le Gay Soleil. She's a beautiful moving filly. Um, the one thing with Vanbury, you know, he was a mature um, two-year-old himself and a really a mature spring three-year-old. So I think that's what you'll see in this filly as well. Lot 472, by So You Think, who, as you said, you, you sold from here. Uh, Royal Welcome is the dam. And this mare by Kingman is just a wonderful European family. Yeah, I mean this fella oozes class. He's just like the the like his father. He's got that 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 strong gene and with this fleck in his tail. But he's a beautifully bodied horse, and you know, we're excited to have him in the draft as well. And finally, lot six three three, another by Turn Me Loose from Watch Her Go. So from a Savabeel mare, and so there's a lot to be excited by on that cross. Yeah, he this colt is a very physical type. You know, and Zavabil, he's making a huge impact as a broodmare sire. I think he's now had 20-odd stakes when as a broodmare sire, 50 stakes horses. So by turn me loose, so he's got a lot going for him. And uh, as I say, very strongly made colt. The thoroughbred industry is a very interesting market. You know, if you look around the world, the market has been stronger than ever. Um, we seem to plough our way through um, bad times. So um, we've got through COVID, but I tell you what, I'm so excited about Cracker this year to have our friends from Australia back, Hong Kong, Singapore, um, our international clients from, from Europe. I think it's going to be a, an amazing sale. I love having people there and I love people, so I'm pretty excited about it. As always, there'll be some star performers in the Windsor Park draft here at Caracas. Rick Williams, the Oak Start, has a great record for producing top-class race horses bought by all the leading stables. In 2023, they're standing not only 
Darcy Brahma, who has such a consistent record of producing stakes winners, but also the regally bred US Navy flag. This draft offers such versatility in terms of the stallions and the pedigrees to choose from. It's wonderful being back in New Zealand and, and seeing so many old friends and I think a lot of the Australians in particular will feel that coming back to Caracas in 2023. It's, it's been a while between trips, hasn't it? It certainly has, I think, for we New Zealanders. I had my first trip to Australia in July and caught up with a lot of trainers. We have a number of horses and work there and um, yeah, I think they're all looking, looking forward to coming back to New Zealand. We're certainly looking forward to seeing them all again. Well, it's been great seeing Darcy Brahma, you know, your stalwart now, he's really continuing to fly the flag. Sierra Sue winning the Futurity in Australia in 2022, Cinerama, a multiple group winner, Darcy Labella, a group two winner at Trentham in December. And of course, US Navy flag has been with you a couple of years and there's plenty happening for him in the Northern Hemisphere too. He's made a good start up there and he obviously had a very classy filly in, uh, in America that ran in the Breeders' Cup, started favourite, unfortunately he didn't perform that day, but he's making a nice solid start here. Uh, I think the autumn will tell with him, but it's been great to have him here for two seasons. Darcy Brahma, of course, continues. I think he's fourth on our premiership again with, and as you say, he's had Cinerama and Darcy Labella this year and Sierra Sioux in Australia. And uh, we've got a bigger than normal racing team and a heap of them Darcy. So I think you'll see hear a lot more of them this autumn. Well, looking at the Oaks yearlings for Caraca 2023, we start with lot 496. This is by Al Manzor from Sea Goddess, this filly. And this is a granddaughter of your, your absolute champion, Sea Change. And she's just so chilled, isn't she? She just has this magnificent temperament. She sure has. She, she reminds me a lot of Sea Change. She's not quite got the length of most Al Manzors, but he's a horse that's profiling up, and I hope he's one of the next big stallions for New Zealand. But she's a lovely move, a nice horse. Yeah, we'll have a reserve on her. Though. Next was lot 533 by Magna Grecia from So Lyrical. Uh, this really, of course, is by an English 2000 Guineas winner who's by Invincible Spirit. And it's the family of an Irish 2000 Guineas winner, of course, Bachelor Duke, who you, uh, stood here and a gorgeous action, a nice sort of light walk as well. Again, a really lovely filly. Yeah, Magna Grecia is a horse that we've used a bit out of Coolmore of, for obvious reasons. And uh, the, the mare's been rather unlucky. And as you say, it's Bachelor Duke, Sadler's Wells family. And uh, I hope this is the filly to change your luck. Lot 49 is by, so you think, of course, the runner-up in the Australian Champion Sires title last season. This filly's from Aurora Lights. She's by Darcy Brahma. She was placed in a New Zealand Oaks. This is just a lovely classic filly, and we know what So You Think has been doing right around Australasia. Yeah, he's a stallion also I've used a lot, and we've got two or three young ones by him. We've retained three-year-old and a couple of two-year-olds, so we've got to sell some, and unfortunately this is one of the ones. But yeah, Aurora Lights was a lovely filly and a full brother based in both the South Australian and Queensland Derby. So it's a staying family, a nice family, and we do like the filly. Lot 259 is a colt by Darcy Brahma from Italic. This mare's worked so well with Darcy, including a, F a Flemington group winner, Paint the Town. Yeah, Paint the Town raced in our colours. She was a very good mare, came from here, and Bevan Lamming trained her. It was Jamie Carr, was a perfect ride that day. Cursive and right descriptor have been raced by a couple of mates of mine from Mildura, dentist mates, and they're very good horses. Cursive and right to script one, two from three. So unfortunately, Colic, hopefully we'll get those boys into this one. And lot 572 is another by Darcy Brahma from surreptitiously. Now the dam's done a great job, hasn't she, with five to race for five winners, including the group one winner, Saki Soldier. Yeah, lovely horse, Saki Soldier. I sold him for about 60,000, I think. Mm. And uh, Mr. Croissant, Dragon Master, have both done very well in Hong Kong. This fellow's bigger and stronger than anything the mayor's left. He's He's my top colt in my opinion. You know, I can see a market correction coming up at some stage, but I think New Zealand will do well. I think the, the value is still there. I think the Australians in particular will be keen to get back. And we've had some wonderful results over the last 12 months. A beautiful environment to grow out yearlings and future racetrack stars at the Oaks Stud. Coming up after the break, we look at some of the yearlings from Woburn Farm and Wentwood Grange.
Welcome back to our 2023 NZB Karaka Yelling Sale Preview. Woburn Farm has been magnificently developed in only a few short years by Adrian Stanley, already attracting clients that include some of New Zealand's greatest thoroughbred breeders. In 2023, Adrian's taking a magnificent draft to Karaka, including the one and only yearling at the sale by young sire sensation Extreme Choice. Burn Farm, for a lot of people watching, they might not know a lot about you and your background. The main business obviously is yearling preparation, but you also do the ready to race, ready to run horses as well. So it's a, it's a great little business you have going. Yeah, we cover probably try cover all bases with selling horses through most sales, um, ready to runs and, and mainly the yearling. So lately we'll be getting into the ready to run market with a lot of success as well. So it's been um, great for the farm. And the horses that you've had going through so a number of those sorts of sales, you know, Lucky Swainess, Seamus to Catch a Thief, Lincoln Cruise, all just recently really, you know, promising types that are all performing well in stakes company. Yeah, they are. They're all doing a good job. Um, very happy. The horses were selected and clients' horses that they selected for the sale as well. So they've all been set to a certain sales, what, what we think that they would suit, and they've all been doing a great job, and hopefully all the clients are very happy with what they purchased. Well, looking at Caracca 2023, lot 318 we'll look at first by Toronado from Loveheart Lass. It's the only Toronado in the sale, which is quite incredible, being such a wonderful son of High Chaparral, uh, standing at Victoria's Swettenham Stud. The dam's a half-sister to stakes winner Thunder Down Under, and this is a descendant of one of the greatest arc-winning race mares all along. Yeah, he's a lovely colt. Purchased them from Melbourne English Wheeling Sales, so very happy to get a Toronado. They're very hard to get. We've had some good success with Toronado in the past. But he's strong, he's got a good neck, good shoulder. He's a powerful type, and he's got a lot of high shape around him as well with that, the leg and the walk, and just a bit of X Factor about him that I really like about him. The second lot we looked at here was lot 554 by Dundeal from Stolen Gem. And the dams by Snitzel had the two-year-old To Catch a Thief, third and the two-year-old Eclipse Stakes. Delightning Ridge and Nanny Maroon are the second and third dams, who Australians know very well too. The Dundeal tail, there's a lot of Dundeal there, but a lot of Snitzel in him, isn't there? Yeah, there is a lot of Snitzel about him and Dundeal, so it's crossed over 50-50, I'd say, with him on tight. So this is the second foal out of the mare. She's done a good job with her lovely US Navy flags that we sold last year and is in the third in the Eclipse Stakes the other day and we'll be going to the Cracker Million so all the best for the owners for the Cracker Million will be <laughs> sure to watching them. Lot 444 is by Super Seth from Pernima. This is a half brother to group winner and triple stakes winner Tom Alila. He's a playful fellow when he when he concentrates though he really swings along. Yeah he's um, probably the one of the best movers in the draft. He's lovely athletic um, action on him but strong and physical as well. Um, quite impressed with him I think he'll be a Good solid racehorse, this guy. Lot 326, well you won't miss this one, the Extreme Choice Majesta Phillies. This is the only Extreme Choice in the sale and they are like diamonds, rare as diamonds. I just love seeing the Rory's Jester look, the, the flaxen mane and tail and the big blaze through, not a single doubt, the sire of Extreme Choice. And from a schnitzel mare, so Redoute's Choice, it's twice in the third generation, that's interesting too. Yeah, I don't have to say anything about the stallion. He's doing an <laughs> amazing job. They're very hard to get these horses. And so when you get the opportunity to purchase one of these horses, you've just got to snap them up. And she's just a ripper, I reckon. Strong, physical. See the nod of single doubt through her. And with the Roy's Jester, and yeah, I love Roy's Jester, just speed. Whoever's going to purchase her, you'll take her home, put a saddle on her, and you'll be up and racing pretty quickly. She'll be, if someone wants for a crack a million, and then you've got the chance for a slipper. So <laughs> the dream's alive with someone there, but I think she'll shape up to be one of the best, yeah. Lot 99 is by Dubious from Chit Chat. We know Dubious was a breeder's plate winning multiple two-year-old stakes winner by the great Not A Single Doubt. And the dams by Anabar and from an Auckland Cup winner upset him. So a mix of, of speed and stoutness here. Yeah, there's a lot of stoutness as well, but you cross off the speed and I think that's a perfect cross for the, this filly is just athletic. She's big in condition. She's She'll be cheap to race it, races. She'll run <laughs> run off her woolly rag, but um, she's athletic and strong and I love her mover. She's just a, yeah, lovely. What you look for on her horse. She's a boss. She's a, yeah, she knows she's number one and she shows it day to day, but she's kind as well and she just gets on with her job. So that's all the traits you want in a good filly. 
And finally, lot 549 by Magna Grecia from Starzell. The stallion was an English 2000 Guineas winner by Invincible Spirit, the sire of I Am Invincible. Dan by Snitzel was a two-time winner. Just a beautiful quality type with a lovely light action. I love how she gets along. Yeah, she's a great mover as well and strong and very mature for her age. I bred her and put her in fold, the mother in folder Magna Grecia. I think he's one of the best stallions on type. Cross off this, she was a big strong snitzel mare, her mum. So I thought on type she'll throw exactly what we've got and I think she's just sort of like an old school racehorse, you know, good tough head on her, strong physical. If she wants to go to war, she'll keep going. I think we'll be nice and strong, there'll be quality of horse. Like, especially in my draft, I think we've got a very good quality um, line of horses here. And the Australians, I'm pretty sure they can keep some money after Magic and come over to Karaka and have a field day and everybody will get looked after there as well as they know they do every year. The Wyburn Farm yearlings bound to go to some great homes, giving them the best chance of racetrack success. The Hawkins family's Wentwood Grange is another Kiwi farm coming off an incredible 12 months of racetrack success, including their graduates winning some of Australia and New Zealand's biggest races. In 2023, they're offering yearlings by some of the best stallions in New South Wales and some by some outstanding young New Zealand sires. Sean Wentwood Grange, it's a real family affair, isn't it? I mean, it's a really great property and, and love how your stable blocks are set up. So it's a really functional farm for these beautiful yearlings. Yeah, absolutely. It is functional. We've, we've designed it that way and we've got three different farms that we all work in together alongside each other. And yes, we're a family operation. Yeah. Uh, me and my two brothers pretty much run the farm now and Dad, Mum and Dad still have an active role and our partners are very much involved too. And the results coming off the farm are quite incredible. I mean, the Melbourne Spring Carnival, we know of course Manzois winning the, the Victoria Derby, reared and prepped here at Wentwood. High Emotion won the Bendigo Cup, third in the Melbourne Cup, bred, reared and sold here at Wentwood Grange. Liggety Split won the Edward Manifold. I mean, this is a great achievement, you know, within one racing carnival in Australia. It was a fantastic spring. We, um, yeah, we, we couldn't believe it. It was, it was outstanding. Yeah, and the way um, High Emotion ran the Melbourne Cup, that was we were cheering, we were cheering hard. It was, yeah, it was fantastic. And the Almanzors have two Almanzors like that perform. You know, that's great. It's a great um, advert for New Zealand, so young sires coming through and looking towards Karaka. Well, looking at the draft for Karaka 2023, we start with lot 580 by Super Seth out of Tegwin. Now, this colt is a three-quarter brother to Let's Karaka Deal, who's twice group place. And he's a big, strong boy. And we're hearing about the Super Seths that, you know, a lot of them are throwing to, to Redoute's choice. Yes, yeah, I'm very impressed with the Super Seths. They've got great walk on them, a great spring of river and a great depth of girth with a beautiful walk. Lovely solid horses. And as you said, her first foal was by Dundeal, let's crack a deal, and he, he was group performed on two occasions. The second lot here at Wentwood Grange is lot 555 by Almanzor from Storm Fronts. And the dam's from the great Denise's Joy family, and already a great producer. He's a, a gorgeous deep chestnut and another really powerful colt. He is a strong, powerful colt. And Storm Fronts has been a wonderful mare for us. She's a good old girl. She said six falls to races, five multiple winners, two stakes winners. So she's just been a fantastic old girl. And she's left another cracker here. Lovely, good walking colt. Next is lot 507 by Zoo Star from Shenandoah. Uh, we know obviously Zoo Star is absolutely flying in Australia and in the Northern Hemisphere too. The dam was placed in the good fillies and mares race in SA, the Queen of the South, and is a half to a multiple stakes winner in Menage. A really great back end and a really forward typical sort of Zoo Star. Yeah. He's strong, strong, powerful horse. It looks as though he should get up and go. And as you say, his mum's a half sister, Minaj, who won the 955 challenge at Flemington. So there's a bit of speed there in the family. And a first foal was a winner at a, as a two year old over 970 metres. So with Zoo Star Cross, we're hoping this should be a get up and go sort of sprint, crack a millions type of horse, we're hoping. Lot 117 is a filly by Dundeal from Crescendo and the dams by Stravinsky is a half sister to Lee Valley who was a cuddle stakes winner and threw a group one winner in Valley Girl and this is just a lovely filly. 
isn't she lovely? She's more of your sort of Oaks filly and she is just gorgeous. Lee Valley was one of our foundation mares, probably the first black type horse that we bred. So yeah, we've got a lot of passion behind this family. And yeah, Valley Girl was obviously at a Lee Valley. So it's been a great family to us and hopefully it carries on going. Lot 399 by microphone from our Aberdeen. This filly sire is obviously from a great stallion family and by Exceed and Excel. The dam was a multiple group winner and a group one place. And again, just a beautiful filly. What do you see in this girl? She's another sort of sprint type. She looks as though she's get up and go and she's, from what I've seen of the photos, looks like the microphones in general. Our Aberdeen, she was dual group two winner, dual group one placed. She was by a sort of underrated stallion because he wasn't here for long looking at Lucky. But when you look up looking at Lucky's stats, he's actually been a very good stallion that just didn't get the opportunities. Yeah, hopefully there's somebody can see something in this filly. Our feelings are just can't wait to catch up with everybody again. It's been so long since we've seen our friends. You know, the guys from Aussie that we've built good, strong relationships with and clients that, you know, haven't been able to get over and see their horses. So it'd just be great to see everybody. <laughs>